All right, welcome back. It's the Cup Chasers podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. The Arsenal have traveled to St. James's Park and Big put game. a blinding performance. Big game. Fantastic. Newcastle at their own game, on their own ground. Uh, and music it, right out of the Toon Army. Oh, absolutely. If you think Martin Odegaard is the greatest thing since sliced <laughs> bread, go ahead and get 15 <laughs> likes for those 15 goals. And we'll subscribe to the channel, get the notification bell on. Yeah, this was one of the best performances of the season. One of the first complete performances Arsenal's put together since, uh, I'd probably say since Fulham, since we went to Fulham. Um, I thought it was interesting that we played their game. We kind of knew that they were coming with the fit with the hatchets with the with the axes and the war hammers and uh, we kind of went toe-to-toe with them on that you know uh granite jaca did his best to uh it was so crazy that granite jaca was trying to get in a fight but then when odegaard went off at the end of the game and he had the armband all of a sudden he's the peacekeeper all of a sudden he's the one not he's trying to get everybody away, you know, point, point thing up, you know, but yeah, this was an absolute, I mean, this was an incredible performance for me from all around. And again, I'll say, I said it in the chat, um, when Arsenal are at our best, it's so difficult to pick a man of the match. The, the official man of the match went to Jorginho, which I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. He had an amazing performance. He was fantastic. But honestly, as a, as a forward myself, you know, Gabby Jesus has to have a shout. My man absolutely <laughs> ran himself into the... Well, he's a workhorse. That's why y'all bought him. He's healthy. He's on the form. He's a workhorse. He's popping up on the right back. He's popping up in the left back position. He's clearing headers off the line. <laughs> you know, he's chasing balls into the corner. Dude, he was immense. He, I mean, it's one of those performances where no one's going to talk about it. But the way I watch games, especially in positions that I've played and so I'm intimately familiar with, the way I watch the game, it's like I notice that kind of thing. I notice like half the time I'm not even watching the guy on the ball. No. Half the time it's, it's, I'm, I'm well, looking right, at the guy on the, the guy on the ball is only going to have the ball for 10 yeah. percent of the game. It's, I'm, it's, I'm it's what you do the, off the ball, right? 100%. Absolutely. And, and the work that Jesus put in, knowing, knowing, uh, you know, where sometimes Zinchenko wasn't going to be, or sometimes, you know, if Ben White was caught up the field and he was just, he'd pop up defending, you know, the, the, the counterattack. I'm like, man, he's, he must've run 90 yards to get in that position you know, and then 12 seconds later, he's 90 yards up the other way. I was like, I was absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. But I think my man of the match has to go to Granite Shaka. You know, even though Odegaard puts in a performance and gets the goal and broke out. Wow. Granite Shaka, man. Well, the clearance, the clearance Shaka gets. The tackle that he, dude, yeah. he's run, he's run, he's tracked back 50, 60 yards. Just to make that save. A glorious slide tackle. Joel Linton doesn't even know he's there. Nope. Doesn't even know he's coming. And, you know, it's not like Newcastle played bad in this game. No. This, this was, was a top was a notch close. Oh, game from both Again, teams. It's, it's one of those where I always say, if you want to go watch a Premier League soccer yeah. game and understand why we watch the Premier League, go watch this one. Yeah, this, this is one was, of those ones. Just like the relegation battle, you should go watch. Just like you the should day. go watch Ooh, this games one. for Ooh. different reasons, but yeah, this this uh, yeah, this performance was, and it wasn't like, you know, me and Lauren were talking about it when we went up two nil. It was like seventy fourth or something like that, and she kind of made a comment about it felt it was two nil lead again, but it felt different. And I was like, yeah, well, we didn't blast them away in an 11-minute right. spell right. and then sit back. This no. was a... It was back and forth the entire game. Yeah. Well, we got the goal, and 
I don't know if you noticed, it was like the 14th minute. We got the goal, and Odegaard and Zinchenko and Jorginho brought everyone together. And we did a little huddle, almost like we had just gotten scored on and we needed to regroup. But it was interesting because the first 10 minutes, they should have scored three times. They've hit the bar. They were they were all over us. Um, and the penalty shout was like I was going to be so mad because I was certain they were going to give that penalty. <laughs> because when I saw it in slow mo, yeah, he's he is moving his arm away. He's moving away. And away and back. He's trying to get out of the he's way. Seen that called yeah. and then it hit his thigh, and I was like, man, if they <laughs> give this penalty, I'm going to be so mad. Um, it's not to say that Newcastle maybe didn't deserve a goal. I mean, they hit the bar 90 seconds into the game and we knew, you know, we knew they're going to come out flying. Uh, and I was worried for 10 minutes there. I was like, Oh goodness, this is, this doesn't, you know, this looks rough, but the fact that it took VAR five, six, seven, however long, uh, to review the play was a, I think it was a huge bonus a huge help for us it broke the momentum kind of gave us a restart and we were the better team for the rest of the game uh completely it was uh i mean like i say everyone everyone should get a shout even Saka had a decent game uh you know as far as compared to the the games he's, we've played recently uh martinelli did a ton of running um yeah it was it was fantastic I mean, and yes, I do think that Granit Xhaka deserves all the all the praise, and he put in an absolute warrior's performance. I I love me some Martin Odegaard. <sighs> I'm all about it, man. I have a uh, Odie's team of the season card on FIFA, so I'm gonna be a little bit biased. Yeah. What I'm is oh, what's his a, uh, what's his numbers? Yeah. Oh, it's it's stupid. He's out of control, isn't he? It's stupid. Yeah. Um, He's just class, man. Yeah, I'll pull it he's, up on my. He's pizza. just oozing, oozing class, and uh, if there wasn't a certain ginger-haired Belgian in the league, I would, I would give him, you know. No, nah, Odie's my man in the match here because the, the goal, the goal he scored, <laughs> the keeper makes it look bad, but when he hits, it's the timing of a midfield goal. That's what you want from a midfield goal scorer is to put him in unexpectedly to hit the defense in a moment where, oh, we're not expecting him to shoot. One of the greatest, you know, shout out to a City player, but one of the greatest Yaya Toure goals is just where he just gets the ball on the outside and just rips one, one touch right off the, you know, it. Um, he was in the same spot that Gundogan got two goals in. It's yeah. the same and kind it's, of... It's, the, it's that same it's midfield that. goal scorer spot where you're just going to hit it because you see the keeper not expecting it. He's not leaning. He's not on his toes. He's not expecting the ball to cross three, four, five. I think it was three defenders. It, it just yeah, straight oh, it slots. Went, back. It went through some people. It went through Botman's <laughs> legs. <laughs> right. It went right through Botman's legs. So when that ha- it's it's a great goal. He put Botman. in a great performance. Odegaard is that you've said it in previous podcasts. When Odegaard leaves the field, you notice a leadership change on the field, and that presence on the field can't. Xhaka has a great run, great defensive performance hustled the entire time oh yeah he gave it he gave it all Odie converts that hustle to forward momentum forward passes goal scoring opportunities assists into the magic magic. and you're like when you text the group i didn't say anything back when you were like who's the man of the match i'm a midfield player like i'm always gonna side with the midfielder right it's the hustle the conversion of the hustle it matters in games like this. And Newcastle, you said it was going to be the one-on-one battles in the midfield. Odegaard is your midfielder who converted that in this game to give him – that's why you win, and that's why he gets my man of the match. You know who didn't get mentioned the whole game? It was Bruno Guimaraes, their playmaker. He was quiet the whole game. We shut him down completely. An absolute blanket. Um and and here's to to answer your question. So my 92 center midfielder team of the season Odegaard has a 90 pace. Jeez. 87 that's, shot. I don't know about 90 pace. I don't think he's oh, that. Oh no, pace. they they boost him in the team of the season. No, they, he's they, they they give him. Sure. 
94 passing, which I'll give him. Yeah. 91 dribbling, 70 sure. defense, and a 72 physicality. His acceleration. 70 is- defense. My man's an animal in the press. So it's his. The reason why his defending's bad is his is his heading accuracy and his heading. He, he doesn't go up for the ball. Is he doesn't what, go up for headers. That's for sure. Um, yeah. But his positioning gets a overall ninety two, which makes him a absolute oh, monster he's brilliant. in the midfield. Right. Um, I love playing with him. His dribbling, his is his dribbling is a ninety one overall. You can't take the ball from him. His physicality, he's big. Like I said, I play with him on a weekend basis. Oh, yeah. he gets my man of the match. Yeah. One thing I do want to, another thing I want to mention, um, since you talked about when Odegaard come off the field, I yeah. think this is the very first time all season long that I was perfectly okay with Odegaard coming off the field because in the pre in previous times he's come off the field, we've been down and Arteta's kind of looked desperate throwing on something, anything to try to get something to work. Uh, Arteta, even Arteta today, and, and and I'm behind Arteta, trust the process always, but, you know, he's made some some questionable decisions, I feel like. Uh, but today, but during the Newcastle game, he got everything right for me, 100%. Um, the tweak in, at halftime, dropping Xhaka back a little bit deeper, uh, to stay with Joel Linton. I mean, it, it, and so when Odegaard comes off, all Partey did was man more Gimerich, right? He just stayed on Gimerich the whole time. You could tell because Partey doesn't normally take up such advanced positions, but if you looked at where Gimerich was, he was just trying to stay with him right. the whole time. And it was, uh, and it was perfect to kind of shut the game down. Uh, you know, kind of game management style. And I also think that we we handled the part of the game that we normally don't, where things are, you know, people are getting in fights, they're shoving, there's people jawing, you know. Um, and none of that would have happened, honestly, if there wasn't a sh- absolute shocking performance from the referees. But luckily, you know, thankfully we... Our performance overshadows that completely, so we don't even really need to talk about it. But, uh, yeah, complete performance. I was excited. I was pumped. Um, kind of makes the kind of makes the dynamic of the season maybe a little touch sadder, knowing that we can pull out a performance like that, you know, and then we didn't even show up at at city. You know, we we let we let some things slip that maybe we shouldn't have. So if, so if there's a part of me that's that's like feels a little bit bad about it. But yeah, we got the revenge from last season, and that's always sweet. You know, old Rodri, Rodri, uh, the citizen, saying uh, I don't know if you saw that in the press conference from Madrid. Rodri was saying how football always gives a chance at revenge, and. Uh, because at the end, because at the end of last season when we lost up there two nil, it was devastating. I was heartbroken because that was an absolutely awful game, and uh, revenge is sweet. 